welcome back. In the 90s, the only real competition Nintendo had was Sega, especially when it came to the West. Recently, we've seen Sega release micro versions of these, which are amazing to look at, but extremely awkward to play. Well, what if I was to tell you we can actually get a new Game Gear with an IPS screen, lithium battery, and not only play Game Gear titles, but a host of others, such as Mega Drive, Sega 32X, Arcade, and PlayStation. What? In today's review, we're going to check out the Sega Mame Gear. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribe. The Mame Gear is made in the UK. You can design your own and either order one pre built or get the parts to do it yourself. It runs on the Raspberry Pi and you get a pre configured micro SD image ready to go. The question is, how difficult is it to build? Let's check it out. So this is a box, and it opens up. Outside all these air bubble bags, we get some stickers. I like my fun bags bouncing up and down. So we ordered everything from the website, outside the micro SD and the Raspberry Pi. And I don't know why Sonic needs a car. So we get one of these, which is the main board. And this looks exceptionally clean. The display is already attached. And here's the backside. Try sticking it up your bum. This here is the extension board, which gives us both a USB port as well as the micro SD slot without needing to open up the unit. And here is the shell. We've gone with the classic Game Gear design, and inside the shell we got some more parts, such as buttons and other bits. The Pi Zero 2 is the recommended board. We managed to get one from Amazon without pins. We only did this to save money, and yeah, just get one with pins if you can. Especially if you're bad at soldering, like me. I've seen cleaner cow excrement. Now we insert the pie into our board. Be careful not to bend the pins, and a solid push should do it. We can now test the unit using the image burnt with Etcher. After we've checked the buttons work correctly, we can shut down and then insert the speaker. And then connect and screw in the expansion board. We can then place the main board into the front side of the case, followed by a good screwing. Screw it good. One thing to note is there are two battery bays. So if you want to double up on battery life, what you need to do is add another battery. After removing the tape, we can add the lens. And here it is. The Zega Mame Gear. And even though this is a third party product, it looks very nice indeed. Let's have a look around. On the top we got a volume rocker, a headphone jack, USB port, micro SD card slot, USB-C for charging, and on the end the on and off switch. On the right side of the unit we have a switch that says bright on it, but this is actually the select button. On the bottom we have these holes with sticks in it, and these are for tying straps to. She likes it rough. There are two battery bays, one on the left already has a battery in. And on the right, we have an empty space. We can double the battery life if we want to here. So the battery is not exactly a snug fit, but we can use some Kyra grip or double-sided sticky tape. Sorted. Let's check out the D-pad and the buttons. So the D-pad uses a rubber membrane, and it feels like the circular disc rests upon a center point. To the buttons. Buttons 1 and 2 bounce back quite nicely, but the bottom two unfortunately feel slightly squishy in comparison. Now it's time for the size comparison. The Zega Mame Gear is slightly larger than Nintendo Game Boy. Larger than the RG353VS, a Sony PSP 1000, and even the Retroid Pocket 3. It certainly is a very big boy. Let's teabag it. The Zega Mame Gear screen is the size of a Roybush teabag. Boot up time. Hello, I am John Luke. Let's get dirty with no shirty. What do you call a fake noodle? An impost. Why didn't the teddy bear eat dessert? because she got stuffed by John Lou. Oh, this one is good. 
which superhero hits the most home runs? Why, it is me, John Luke, with your mum, your sister, and your teddy bear. As this uses Emulation Station, the more games are on it, the longer it'll take to boot. And this is what's on the stock firmware. Very much like a RetroPie, we select the system we want to play, and then select the game. To exit the game and get back to the menu, we need to push the select button and start. Let's get into some gameplay. On the links, there are some games we can play vertically. Push select and it'll rotate the screen. Bit of Game Gear now, here's Sensible Soccer. And now, onto some Master System. We can see here that the screen is not filled. So what we can do is change the emulator by hammering Start button just after we've selected the game. And once we're in, we can change to Pico Drive. There we go. Much better. And we also have the Mega Drive. Wow, what slowdown. To speed this up, we can select Pick a Drive as the default emulator. And now it plays like butter. But if you look closely, the screen is actually not filled. So you can push Select and the bottom button at the same time. And we have RetroArch, where we can select options. Go to Settings, Video, Scaling, and change Aspect Ratio to Config. Much better. And one more thing we need to do for the Mega Drive is to set the controls. So in the RetroArch menu, we go to Port 1 Controls, and then set up the A, B, and C button. Hit the back button, then go to Save Core Remap File. So now our controls will be set up correctly for every Mega Drive game we play. Here's some Game Boy, and if you look closely, you can see that the pixels are not scaled perfectly. The display itself is fairly low resolution, so integer scaling makes the playing area either far too small or far too large. If you want to even out the pixels, we'll need to enable bilinear filtering. We'll now turn off the filter and continue with Game Boy Color. Next up, Nintendo. Super Nintendo. If 
you want to add more games to this, we'll need to use a computer and Wi-Fi. It only supports 2.4 GHz, but once we're connected to the network, we can type it into Explorer and then copy over our game files. The folders are ready for us to slam our ROMs in, and before you ask, N64 is a no-go. Once the system sees the games added, you'll be able to select them in this menu. Let's see what this thing can run. First up is Arcade, and here's Commando. We change to vertical mode in the settings. We can also change controls if you wish. When playing Street Fighter 2, it becomes obvious that the D-pad is absolute arse for fighting games. I could not even let out one Hadouken. And the same goes for Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. If you don't use the diagonals, shooters are mostly okay. That is, unless we try Cotton 2. Neo Geo games, they're no problem. Unless you want to play a fighting game, we really need these D-pad corners. Some more added systems, here's Game Boy Advance. And back to Sega with 32X. Sega CD. PlayStation. and Amstrad CPC. So what do we think of the Sega Main Gear? For one, this handheld looks and feels like a real Game Gear. With the many options on the site, we can create a truly unique design, and using RetroWalk, we can change options as we wish. Unfortunately, the D-pad is not ideal. It may be similar to a real Game Gear, but it's not enjoyable as we can't even throw out one Hadouken. The screen needs a higher resolution, and the battery life only manages to play 3 hours. At the end of the day, the Sega Main Gear feels incredibly outdated. What's more is the Pi boards are no longer extremely cheap, making this a very hard sell unless you're wanting a handheld to look like a Sega Game Gear. For everybody else, maybe the Ambenic RG353P or the Retro Pocket 3 will be the handheld for you. As we finish off with Moonwalker, here's a big shout out and thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Thank you everyone. Here at Team Pandori, we create video reviews like this, as well as video guides and help fix the A500 Mini and them cheap Chinese arcade boxes. If you want to help support our work, check the video description down below. I will be in the comments tapping away, please say hello. Anyway, this has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! If you need a rub, message me. My handle is John69MassageMan. Like, subscribe and bell.